Welcome back. The questions are still coming in about COVID-19 and we're continuing our live virtual conversation with Chad pediatrician Dr. Charles Capetta to answer your questions. So let's get right to them. Brian asks, he says, I've heard the vaccine works by altering DNA. If I have my child vaccinated, will her DNA be altered enough to affect her future children? What do you say to that doctor? Well, the vaccines are mRNA vaccines, which mRNA, RNA is a basic building block of the body and cells. So what it does is the vaccines um, trigger the, um, the body to produce a protein against which the body fights and, and produces antibodies. And antibodies are make up our immune system response. So in that way, uh, anytime we get a cold, um, we have antibodies against that cold in the future. So um, it's a short-term alteration of localized cells, just my, primarily in the immune system. It will not affect at all reproductive issues uh, uh, for future kids, uh, for anything related to that. So great question, great concern. But um, again, as a dad speaking, a pediatrician of 30 plus years, uh, I would give my children, grandchildren to be and all those in the future, the vaccine. How long should children who have had COVID-19 wait before getting the vaccine or booster once it's approved for their age group? Um, I've been saying that if you once you finish your isolation period, which is a period of 10 days, um, then you're and feel OK. And as long as you don't have a fever, there's no medical reason you can't have the vaccine. So I would um, set up your uh, opportunity to get that done. There's a booster blitz going on January 8th as, as evidence on WRMR I've been reading today. So sign up as soon as you can to get that. But the waiting period is, has been waived and has shown that our bodies can handle this and um, would get it as soon as you can. Alinda asks, do you still need to wear a mask in public places after having a booster shot? She wants to know how likely are you to get COVID-19 after a booster? Well, uh, thank you, Linda. I've been wearing a mask since March of 2020 and will continue to do so in public places for the simple reason, out of respect for, for you and, and my fellow humans that I don't know where my immune system is. I don't know what your immune system is doing. So the droplet infection um, that come from my mouth when I breathe can spread to anybody uh, without notice. So my mask is a, is a simple and effective way to prevent that. So I would ask, um, it's referenced before, um, please, if you could wear a mask outside, kids can wear masks. There's nothing wrong with wearing masks uh, to and above, as you know, it's not gonna affect their development. Um, it's just protecting them. So, um, and and I would continue to emphasize that. Sorry, I think I've spaced out there oh, trying to get to the other second half of the question. I apologize. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, doctor, based on what you said and, and what we've been seeing uh, since 2020, wearing a mask is not just to protect yourself. It's actually to protect others from germs that you may have. Oh, 100 percent. Yes. And it's just our part. To, we live in a communal world and we go to the grocery store. We go to the other locations, the doctor's office, things like that. So masks are one effective way, along with vaccination, hand washing and social distancing six feet and beyond, um, especially indoors in public places that you can do your battle and your own little bit uh, of defense against this nasty virus. Chad pediatrician, Dr. Charles Capetta, thank you so much for joining us and for such great information. We really appreciate it. Great to see you guys and thanks so much for having me.